Hi there. Now for this part of the question, you had to find the tension then in the string RQ. And it turns out to be 11.2 newtons to three significant figures. So as usual, I'll just take you through the methods that are involved, or you might want to fast forward to the end. Now, I'm assuming that you've looked at part A because this is very similar to part A. There's three options that we had. We could either resolve along the directions of the strings because this was a special case. I showed you that this angle was 90 degrees. Normally we would, in questions like this, resolve vertically and horizontally. But what it leads to is these two simultaneous equations, which I showed you as I say in part A. You could use these to solve and get this answer here for the tension QR. Or you could use this method using the triangle of forces. So with this one here, if we were going to find this tension QR, what we would need to do is resolve along the direction of the string in the direction RQ. So if we do that, resolving in that direction, then what we get is all of the tension QR acting along that direction, okay? As for this tension, because it's perpendicular, it doesn't enter the equation. It has no effect in that direction, okay? The only other one that we've got to think about is the component of the weight. Remember, this weight can be split into two components, one in this direction and one in this direction. The one in this direction has no effect because it's perpendicular to the direction we're resolving. We're only concerned with this component of the weight. And that component acts in the opposite sense to this, so it's going to be negative, And it's going to be the force times the sine of the angle 35 because it doesn't include that angle of 35 degrees by this method here. Okay? So it's going to be 2g, the weight, times the sine of 35 degrees. If you did work this angle out, it would have been 55 degrees. You could have had an equivalent statement to this, which would have been 2g cosine 55 degrees. Okay? But that's up to you. So this is the resultant force. And that resultant force acting on this particle is zero because it's in equilibrium. So it's just a question of rearranging this to make TQR the subject. And if you do that, what you end up with is that TQR equals 2G sine 35 degrees, which if you're in degrees mode on your calculator is 11.242 and so on. So that gives us 11.2 newtons to three significant figures. Now, if you use the triangle of forces, then you could use either the 35 degree angle or the 55 degree angle. Let's suppose you use the 35 degree angle, then the force that you want to find, TQR, is opposite that 35 degrees. You've got the hypotenuse, 2G, so it would be the sine, the sine of 35 degrees. Well, that would equal the opposite side, which is the tension, QR, divided by the hypotenuse, which is represented as 2G. Rearrange this to make the tension, QR, the subject, and it's going to be equal to 2G sine of 35 degrees. And that is the same calculation that we had here. So you can see it turns out to be 11.2 newtons then to three significant figures. So it is unusual, as I say, to have to resolve along the lines of the tensions, but we were only able to do that really because it was 90 degrees in here. So we played to that concept, okay, to make it easier. Normally we would resolve vertically and horizontally when this angle isn't 90 degrees. Or you could use a triangle of forces, but this wouldn't be 90 degrees. You'd have to use things like the sine rule and cosine rule. Okay, so 
As I say, three methods for you. You can weigh up which one you think is the easiest for you.